drive. You can't be in that thing about more than five minutes. And it's, it's so hot. It's no air, no fan. It's low. Can the little the little vents though to, to give it, the airflow? You know, if it has vents, it's be bummed that I've never figured out how to use them. So we don't even know. I'm serious. It's they, I, it's I, it. And it'd be a fiberglass body. Once that thing gets up to temperature, it gets hot. My first car was a, a 68 Corvair that my dad found in a barn and we restored it together and I, I drove that around. I loved that car. They sold it on me when I was in Boston for college. Seriously? Mm -hmm. That's neat though, doing that restoration. My first car was a 70 Chevelle that we had bought at a car show and my dad and I did the same thing. Every birthday, every I, we got it before I got my driver's license. And we started working on it about a year and a half before I got my license. I mean, I know better what I got for my birthday 20 some years ago than I do a few years ago. I remember getting like a box of headers and putting them on with my dad. And it was just a good, you know, really good thing for him and I. I ended up selling that not long after I got the license. I need to pick up. I go back and kick myself all the time. Get rid of that. I want to thank everyone for attending tonight. We'll uh, go ahead at 6:30. We're going to start the meeting, and like we always do, we start with the pledge of allegiance, followed by a moment of silence. Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Brad couldn't be here, so I'll be the uh, chairperson for the meeting as the vice president. And we'll uh, begin with the, uh, uh, we have a recognition. One of our um, administrators was uh, named School Support Professional of the Year, Brenda Troyer. And we would like to recognize her for her achievement. That was announced at a state convention in French Lake as the IASBO Region 2 School Support Professional of the Year. And would you please stand up so we can recognize Brenda. Troyer. Brenda does a wonderful job as our HR person. She deals with a lot of the insurance and the health questions and those types of things, retirement, payroll, all of those questions that have people across the district calling in quite a bit. And, and she does such a nice job of answering the questions and follow through and providing that personal service that we so appreciate. So thank you, Brenda, for all that you do for the district and for central office. And, and for uh, personally, for all of the times that I've called up wanting to know about the tax form 442 or the, uh, <laughs> yeah. you know, the attendance log, uh, she, she knows every, every uh, paper that's available, every, every kind of document. Tina, uh, Brenda, if you'd like to say a couple of things, or? Uh, <laughs> I just appreciate working for Rochester Schools and appreciate all of you guys, the fact that it's a team atmosphere and we all work together and have a common goal. Thank you, Brenda. Thanks for all you do. So Brenda, as, as is customary, when we have guests that come for the first part, they're not, we don't want to feel obligated that they stay for the second part, so because uh, you've earned this honor, you can also feel free that if you have anything else to do. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> Thank you Thanks, for coming. Brenda. Thank, Thank you guys. See you in the morning. All right, bye. So our next item on the uh, agenda would be to approve some consent items. The consent items on the agenda are the minutes from the May 21st regular board meeting. We have minutes of the June 4th study session. We have minutes of the June 4th special board meeting. And we have certification of the June 4th executive session. Uh, if no one objects, I'll include all of these uh, consent items together and, and ask for one motion. That's fine, Steve. I just do have one thing that needs to be corrected. 
but that can be all together. I mean, it can be sure. all the same. Sure. So approved as corrected? Yes, and the correction I would propose is it's just a typo, I'm sure, but that way, in case people are looking back in the future, they'll know why. Um, on the um, May 21st regular board meeting, and it's just the list of people attending, and it looks like probably something just didn't get erased before Adam Strauss or Trottier, so they'd be a wonderful family to adopt into. <laughs> I don't think probably Adam's looking to be adopted, but, out, but so just to strike the Trottier. Good catch. I'm sure Adam appreciates that. <laughs> Do you have any other additions or corrections? Do we have a, a motion to approve the consent items? Motion to approve the consent items as corrected. I'll second. Okay, motion by Tom, second by Jenny. Uh, all those in favor of uh, approving our consent items, signify by raising your right hand. Opposed? Motion passes 4 0. Okay, uh, next we'll move on to our financial reports. Uh, we have approval of claims. Is this, Valerie, am I taking your part? Hey, I, I wasn't gonna correct you. I'm more than happy to do these yeah. um, next three pieces um, if, if that was, is what sure, you would like. Sure, that would work well. You were doing, you were doing it off great. Um, so approval of claims docket 13,482 13, through 13,686 totaling $2,920,423.36. We had item number two is payrolls. We had two payrolls that posted since our last board meeting. The first one was five, uh, May 25th, 2018 in the amount of $437,042.44. And the second was six, uh, June 8th of 18, $426,339.76. That one totaled. Uh, we have our funds report. Starts with the general fund. Um, balance started the month of May with $367,589.85. We had $993,206.05 worth of receipts. Expenses for the month totaled $981,303.54, leaving us an ending balance of $379,492.36. Um, let's see, debt service fund, we started the, the month balance uh, with $2,228,609.61. We had $29,186.86 worth of receipts. The no expenses for the month, so our ending balance is $2,257,796.47. Uh, revenue this month came from um, some uh, little, what I call fluffle tax dollars. Um, uh, typically we get um, our bulk of the property tax revenue in June and December and for the month of May we received um, some property tax replacement credit dollars, some commercial vehicle excise tax dollars, and some financial institution tax dollars. So those we received for all of our tax funds and you'll see those in the subsequent report um, of the revenues as well. Moving on to Capital Projects Fund, uh, we started our balance with $676,313.40. We had $18,512.70 worth of receipts. Expenses for the month totaled $110,999.68, leaving us an ending balance of $583,826.42. Transportation fund started with $811,379.91. We had $9,697.04 worth of receipts. Expenses for the month were $104,125.40, leaving us an ending balance of $716,951.55. Uh, our expenses for the month were a little higher. Uh, we had bought, uh, purchased uh, diesel fuel for um, for the summer run of things. So that's why that was a little bit higher than last month. And lastly, bus replacement fund started with $143,647.07. Uh, receipts for the month were $2,416.74, leaving us an ending balance 
uh, I'm sorry, no expenses for the month, leaving us an ending balance of $146,063.81. Not sure why that section is highlighted in yellow, but I'll look into that and get that corrected. Any questions with the fund report? Um, I noticed on the transportation operating fund and stuff, there was like a bigger amount. Was that because we were getting the buses ready for inspection? That, the Garver Motors and that stuff? That in conjunction them? with the fuel purchase as okay. well. All right, because for like Garver Motors, it was 13000 and stuff. Mm -hmm. I just wonder. Mm -hmm. We just went through bus inspection. Was that two weeks ago? Yeah, we did go back for June. And got everything passed and um, certified within two days' time. So they did a really nice job of getting them in and out for us as well. Any further questions? Financial consent items? Do we have a motion to approve the financial reports? So moved. Motion by Jenny. Second. Second by uh, Stacy. All those in favor, signify by raising your right hand. Motion passes 4 0. So, so next item uh, student and stakeholder focus. We have some donations. Did we vote on this? Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. just want to announce that. Okay. Yeah, so, just, yeah. so we have some donations. Some of them are new. Okay, so we have a few donations from a, a June 4th meeting, and we also have uh, more donations tonight. I'm going to go over all of them together. So, um, Rochester Optimist Club donated $500 for the eighth grade breakfast. Fulton County Solid Waste District, uh, a $300 donation <coughs> from recycling. Fulton County Solid Waste District, $500 recycling reward to RMS. The Benevity Community Impact Fund um, from AstraZeneca Pharmaceuticals, $240 to Rochester High School. And then uh, additional donations, um, Steve Moore and Moore Insurance, uh, is donating the Zebra, Zebra Athletic Run Through. Uh, so we want to show our appreciation for these donors. Um, did we want to have a motion to accept all donations tonight? So moved. Motion by Stacy. Second. Second by Tom. All those in favor signify by raising your right hand. Uh, motion passes 4-0. Uh, and a big thank you to all of our, our donors in the, in the community. We appreciate everything they do. So as we move on to our agenda items, uh, the next item is under information analysis, and that leads off with the approval of textbook rental fees. So I want to thank all of the high school or all of the secretaries across the district, as well as the administration and Val. I know that they spent a great deal of time going through and looking at textbook rentals and making sure that we aren't overcharging, which is uh, very important in the end, but also making sure that. We're not losing sufficient funds on that as well, and, and the balance between free and reduced, um, those types of things. Also, Scott Kistler plays an integral role in this and making sure we're not duplicating those software products, program, those types of things. So in the end, um, the comparison, and Steve has the, the copy here, um, the comparison from last year, kindergarten would be down a dollar, and I believe that had to do with the composition, both that they were no longer gonna use, so that helps defray that cost by a dollar, and we wanted to recognize that. The most increase would be at the fourth and seventh grade levels with a $5 increase. The rest were nominal between one and $2 across the board for increases for textbook uh, rental. Um, the high school stayed the same other than um, the concern always comes from those dual college credit classes, AP classes, where you were required to adopt certain textbooks for those classes and you're kind of locked in to the college and what they are requiring. So other than that, those are status quo. Is that correct? For the most part? Okay. Get the nod from Valerie. <laughs> yeah. Textbook is always, it is, there is so much work that goes into it, so I appreciate all that they have done, and we want to make sure we're doing our best by our families to not uh, charge any more than we have to, but we also don't want the corporation to have to absorb a large, large cost in that as well, so there's that fine balance that is continually going on. I have a question on the high school ones, and this just may be how I, I read tables a little differently. Sure. How, how do we know what the cost that we're charging is? Because I was confused, I guess, when I looked at that and pulled it back up again. 
because it should have um, a first semester and second semester. Okay, and is there that might what be it is? two lines for that? So, for instance, um, for World Lit, it, if, you, if that was the way we were looking at it, so it's $15 for the first semester, $15 for the second semester, exactly. so that's $30. Exactly. Though. So the cost is in those last two columns. Exactly. Okay, thank you. And, and it might, it, it has that on the first page of the header, see in the upper right hand corner, cost mm -hmm. for first semester, cost for second semester. Mm -hmm. So that's where those two uh, columns Derived from. Okay, so the rest of that information was what was used to figure to, that cost, exactly, but that's exactly. not necessarily it's, important for it's, it's the lay person like me. But good for informational knowledge as to what goes into your student's curriculum. Gotcha. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Is there any further discussion on the uh, textbook rental fees? Seeing no further discussion, uh, so we have a, a motion to approve the textbook rental fees for next year. So moved. Motion by Jenny. Second. Second by Tom. All those in favor of approving textbook rental fees as stated for 2018-2019, raise your right hand. We have a motion passes and four zero. <clears throat> okay, our uh, next item on our agenda. Um, Approval and sale and destruction of surplus items. So we continue to try to clear out the, the buildings and the storage areas and those basement compartments and hallways. And uh, it's interesting what we're finding as we go through yet another HVAC um, construction project. But you'll see that list there. And again, a sincere thank you to Val and to Scott and to Brad Carter and his team for continuing this rotation and make sure that the product ends up where we say that it's going to end up. And that's a constant flow that is going on within the district and we're really starting to see some organization happen across the building. So I don't know if there's anything specific there you'd like to discuss. Does the ice maker work? <laughs> so it's it's just too quiet. <laughs> That's all that just came out. We would be selling everything that we try to sell, we sell as is. I mean, it's it's in the basement. All right, that's a maybe. <laughs> it's a maybe. And sometimes they're good for pieces and parts. <clears throat> okay, so uh, we have a, need a motion to approve this, the uh, sale and destruction of surplus. Uh, does anyone have any discussion on surplus items? Uh, so then we would need a motion to uh, approve the sale and destruction of our surplus items. So moved. Motion by Tom. Second. second by Stacy. All those in favor of approving sale and destruction of surplus items, please raise your right hand. Motion passes 4 0. Ms. Vance, is that correct? Will those, some of those go on sale on um, govdeals.com? Mm -hmm. Okay. And there'll be a link on our website. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> our next item on the agenda under um, information analysis and policies. Uh, we have two policies. Is Jenny, is that your department? It's my department. We have two policies for the first reading. So that means that these don't necessarily, they won't be enacted right this meeting. We'll have um, three readings before they are fully enacted. And so they can be tweaked at any time along that way too. And so at this point, the first one is our mileage policy and we are adopting that to um, be set at the IRS rates, which is roughly double what our previous reimbursement rate was, reimbursement rate. Um, Val and Mrs. Vance ran the numbers and that is something the corporation can absorb. It was set pretty low as an austerity measure several years ago and so because people have done a good job of um, being good financial managers, we've been able to raise that back up. So it, we are proposing a policy that will set it at the IRS rates as of July 1st each year. That coincides with when our contracts are reapproved. Um, the other policy is to uh, refine our middle school sports policy. And so we are proposing that it will read that all middle school sports are open to any student who fulfills academic requirements and follows team rules. Equal access to practice does not equate to equal playing time. So 
Um, I have had many questions, and that's great in the community about this. I know we don't have a lot of um, community members here tonight, but if they're watching on RTC or whatever, or want to talk more about this, I hope that they will. Um, it was the view of the board members as we were working through this that it be um, not that someone could never be let go from a team if they break the rules or not are academically eligible, if they don't have a good attitude, if they, you know, those kinds of things, yes, they, they have not earned the right to participate, but we as a board wanted to make sure that every student who wanted to put in the work to be on a team had the opportunity to learn from a coach and be on the team. But we also understand that that doesn't mean that um, everybody has equal playing time either and that, that should, we should do a good job of explaining that to um, any student that would, would be part of that team. If we did get to the point of having um, many, many students try out for these teams that traditionally only have 10 to 12 people on them, if we suddenly did have 40 or something like that, then, like Mr. Martz had mentioned, our athletic director, that we would look at something like intramurals, something that would allow students to um, still participate and learn the skills, um, but that wouldn't be uh, a burden to travel and that kind of thing. So that is our proposed no-cut policy for first reading. So Jenny, just for clarification on the mileage, this would be the first of three readings, so we wouldn't necessarily roll this over with our July 1st contracts that are coming out, because this would just be the first reading. I think our intention was to perhaps be able to, to waive the three readings for the mileage one, because that was pretty straightforward. I really hate to do that with three of our members not here tonight. It can become effective July 1, even if it's adopted at the July board meeting, and then any mileage incurred between the 1st of July and when the claim is uh, presented can be paid at the appropriate amount. Exactly. If the board chooses to make the July 1 date the effective date. And we did thoroughly discuss this in a study session that seemed that everyone was on board, so I think that probably would be very doable. We have any further discussion on the policies? So we vote on just the first readings or first reading okay. to show the first readings complete it'll come back up for second and possibly third reading in July okay. uh, so moving on to our next uh, <coughs> mm -hmm. here's the yep exactly so the next item on the agenda would be the personnel report and uh, two pages so Under hiring, uh, Alicia Watchman and family and consumer science teacher at the high school and middle school, uh, Nikki Obermeyer, rural fifth grade, Alexis Lowry, rural fourth grade. Uh, under reassignment, uh, Joe Clark from Columbia grade one to riddle grade four, Kristen Murphy from riddle grade four to Columbia Art and PE, Christine Workley from Columbia kindergarten to Columbia grade two. Sarah Downs from Columbia Grade 1 to Columbia STEM. Uh, Jessica DeVees, part-time PE Kindergarten and part-time IA at Columbia to Columbia Kindergarten. Underneath retirement, we have Ned Overmeyer retiring from Rural Special Ed effective May 25th, 2018. Resignations. Valerie Gillespie, business manager, effective June 30th, 2018. Megan Gongware, Columbia Grade 2, effective end of 2017-2018 teaching year. Underneath I read, we have Mickey Overmeyer replacing Megan Rigney. Uh, we have another retirement added. We have Terry Dane, middle school building technician, effective June 8th, 2018. We've added one more hiring. James Starrett, full-time night custodian at Columbia. Do we have any questions on our personnel report? Seeing no further discussion, do we have a, a motion to approve the personnel report? Submit. Motion by Stacy. Second. By Tom. Uh, we have a 
and properly moved and seconded that we approve the personnel report. All those in favor, please raise your right hand. Uh, motion passes 4-0. And then uh, moving on to our other business. Um, we're now at the uh, portion meeting uh, for superintendent business. First, I want to thank Val for all of your work and for forcing central office to dig deeper into <coughs> IOSBO and better understanding budgets and school finance and uh, helping um, Brenda and Julie achieve those goals as well as myself. And I don't know if you, if you want to share a little bit about what's going on and yeah, um, my family has uh, had the opportunity um, to transition uh, farther north, um, um, closer to my family, which has also always been a dream of mine um, in, in this opportunity um, with another district um, came up co coinciding. So that was just a, um, an interesting timing on that piece. Um, but it's been a great honor and ple pleasure to get to know everyone here at the Rochester community. And uh, um, I really appreciate you know working with everyone. It's been um, it's been great, and uh, um, I'm always, I, as I mentioned with, to Deanna and the ladies in the office, um, I'm always just a phone call away, and that's the great thing about IOSBO is, um, is the networking and, and camaraderie from there. So I appreciate the opportunity to observe for, for the community. Thank you, Bob. Um, late in the week, I forget what day it was, um, I did receive a request from the Fulton County Library they would like uh, the board to approve the reassignment of Glenda Sager to serve on the library board. Glenda has done that for the past four years, is willing to continue to serve. Um, I, they sent me the paperwork and everything here for completion, but they would like to recommend or have you recommend that Glenda serve in that position from July 1st of 2018, and it's a four-year term and would complete on June 30th of 2020, 2022. That's odd saying that. Um, so I know that she's interested in continuing, and the library board is interested in continuing to have her serve as a membership. But I do believe that that takes a vote on our board's part to go ahead and reappoint her to that position. I make a motion to approve the to be on the board. So we have a motion by Stacy to appoint uh, Glenda Sager to the library board for another four year term. A second. A second. A second by Jenny. Okay, so it's been moved and seconded that we appoint uh, Linda Sager to the library board. All in favor, please raise your right hand. Motion passes 4 0. Luke called me today and wanted to just a, a very special thank you to all of those teachers engaged in the iRead um, program and the summer program that, that needed to take place. We, the state, um, requires that test at third grade, and, and so we need to make sure that we honor that and, and complete that testing process. With our results after summer school and all of the last testing that came in, we had over a 90% completion rate, passing rate for those students. So he wanted to make sure that we recognize those IRE teachers who put in that extra time and effort and energy into the programming and the scheduling of those students and making sure that we met all of their needs and, and made that um, a very individualized program for them over the summer with great success. So he was very excited when he called this afternoon. I want to thank the administrative team and, and Scott. We're going to be at the fair this year. Um, Scott's kind of grinning at me. We're not exactly sure how it's all going to work. He's been talking to RTC and Joe McCarter, and he thinks he can help us pull this off, but we're going to do online registration at the fair. We hope to have some screens out there with um, our year in review and recap some of those highlighted moments, some new things coming to Rochester schools in the fall, including the preschool, and we'll try to do some interviews and have those posted and flowing. So please look for us at the fair, and we'll be able to help walk parents through that online registration. We're assuming they're taking off work anyway to be out there, so we'll try to uh, do two things at one time and get those kids registered for school as well as get some of our neat programs out there. Then also look for us at the Living Local Parade. We have two or three entries that we're going to be putting into the parade this year. And so we're excited to highlight Rochester schools in that as well. And I believe that's all I have. Thank you, Mrs. Vance. Yeah. Uh, we'll open it up to the, uh, up to the public. Any, any additional comments? 
Any, any board members have any additional comments? Uh, Mrs. Nance was mentioning the many ways that, that being out in the community this summer, and I wanted to thank, I saw, and there could probably be more people that were there, but Mrs. Vance and Mr. Snyder and Mr. Bernacki at the JA Golf Tournament, who made it on social media there. So it's, it was, that's it was really important day. what people see out in the community, and I appreciate that. That was a good day. That was a lot of fun. Did my photo bomb get in there? The yeah, there was a little bit of harassment from, from the workers uh, to the players out there on the course. But what I saw was all very professional. Never done that before in my life. <laughs> it was a great afternoon. It wasn't quite as hot as it was oh, this it was weekend and today, so it was a nice afternoon to be out there with everybody. How were the scores? Well, <laughs> our team won, so oh, there you yeah, go. we're excited about that. Thank you. Thanks. It's a good time. Any further comments? Meeting adjourned. Thanks, Mary. Thanks, Michelle.